welcome to module one of the sanitation safety planning methodology. This is called prepare for sanitation safety planning. My name is Leonela Barreto Dillon and I will guide you while we define the foundation elements of our SSP. Where we will implement it, what for and who will be involved. Therefore, we will establish the priority area, set the objectives, define the boundary and appoint the lead organization and assemble the team. First, we need to establish the priority area. It helps us to identify the focus of the SSP process within a large geographical area like a city or district. Let's imagine a typical city in a developing country. We could have an area of the city whose inhabitants are connected to a sewer system and some of the collected wastewater is transported to a wastewater treatment plant. However, as we move from the city center, the households only count with on-site systems such as septic tanks and cesspools. There, we have fecal sludge emptying trucks which might dispose the material in the open or they might bring them to a fecal sludge treatment plant. Furthermore, as we move from to the outskirts, we might find areas in which inhabitants only have pit latrines and they might be emptying themselves the pits and burying the fecal sludge. Also, there might be agricultural areas in which farmers are using the treated or partially treated wastewater or fecal sludge or even diverting the flows from the open channels to irrigate their fields. So which areas should we consider? The objective of this model is to ensure that the SSP addresses the areas or issues that pose the greatest health risks. This is relevant for municipal authorities, wastewater utility companies and health authorities who are responsible for a broad range of sanitation activities. While establishing the priority areas, keep in mind the recommendations given in the 2018 WHO Guidelines on Sanitation and Health. Keep in mind recommendation one that talks about universal access and use of toilets that safely contain excreta. Remember that the WHO recommends prioritizing areas with high frequency of open defecation, communities where toilets are poorly constructed, unsafe and do not safely contain excreta. Remember that in a community, everyone should be using a toilet to achieve health gains. Also, we should consider recommendation two about safe sanitation chains. It emphasizes that we should include full sanitation chains from waste generation to reuse or disposal. Furthermore, we must take into account all waste streams at all points of the sanitation system, in particular the waste streams that receive inadequate or unknown treatment. Also, you should consider areas with high reported or suspected sanitation related diseases, areas of high population density, vulnerable populations, areas with no or intermittent water supply service, which therefore require self-supply from potentially unsafe water sources, and areas with high formal or informal wastewater reuse activities. Furthermore, you need to consider climate-related exacerbating factors, including Areas where climate is known to currently or historically affect sanitation infrastructure or performance. This can include drought or flood prone areas, areas with high groundwater tables, coastal systems affected by storm surges or high tides, or areas at risk of landslide. Areas not currently affected by climate-related hazardous events, but are likely to be exposed to them if climate conditions change. And sanitation systems or services that have high susceptibility to climate-related hazards, for instance, sewer overflow. Excreta flow diagrams, also called SFT or sheet flow diagrams, 
are excellent tools to identify priority areas to be covered with sanitation safety planning. A SFT presents a clear picture of how wastewater and fecal sludge management services are delivered in a city and the resulting challenges. The flows marked in red indicate that they are not safely managed, indicating the priority which needs to be given to it. When we undertake sanitation safety planning in a locality with a broad range of sanitation activities, we should establish a steering committee. The steering committee should be a representative body with combined oversight of sanitation and reuse activities in the area. Steering committees provide leadership and oversight of the entire process, agreed priority areas for SSP, engagement with and commitment of senior management of the lead agency and secure financial and resource commitment, policy dialogue and amendment as needed to create an enabling environment. The next step, model 1.2, is setting a specific objectives of the SSP process. This defines the actual purpose of the SSP process. The objective of 1.2 is to ensure that SSP outputs respond to the agreed public health objectives for the sanitation system. SSP objectives should be always related to improved public health outcomes. They must be in line with the national sanitation targets. SSP objectives might be short, mid or long term based on the context and the available resources to allow incremental improvements and increasing equity in access to services. Also, they should indicate priorities, be time-bound and, as far as possible, measurable. SSP objectives must be prepared by the steering committee in consultation with other stakeholders, sanitation service providers and local communities. Model 1.3 is called Define the Sanitation Boundary and Lead Organization. The aim of this model is to ensure that the scope of the process is understood by all stakeholders. The boundaries shall reflect the specific SSP objectives defined previously. SSP boundaries might need to be defined to suit the scope of the operation of a sanitation business, administrative boundaries, sanitation catchment area, areas where waste products are used, a specific product, protection of a specific exposure group, or areas where climate currently or likely will affect sanitation. The lead institution for SSP will depend on the boundary and purpose of the SSP. The lead organization does not need to be responsible for all sanitation steps within the boundary, but it should have the institutional ownership, for instance, the mandate for local sanitation provision. Examples are the wastewater utility or the local authority. The following, model 1.4, it's called assemble the team. The purpose of assembling the team is to ensure broad stakeholder commitment to design and implement the SSP process. In sanitation system, this is particularly important as responsibility along the sanitation chain is seldom the responsibility of one organization. Often, the SSP process is initiated by one or several interested individuals or an organization. However, they might not have all the skills needed. Therefore, the initiators require support of all relevant organizations. To assemble the team, first, you need to conduct a stakeholder analysis. To gather the needed expertise, consider that the team should have all the skills, knowledge, information, and resources to identify all the problems represent the whole sanitation system and be able to drive improvements in all areas of sanitation. 
You should make sure that the team is formed with the organizations and individuals in charge of all relevant sanitation steps, as well as representatives of the exposure group. The team should have a mix of skills in technical, health and climate topics. While implementation of sanitation programs is often delivered through infrastructure, ministry, agencies and utilities, the overall responsibility to ensure these investments result in improved public health lies with health authorities. Indeed, the WHO guidelines in sanitation and health in its recommendation 4 indicates that the health sector should fulfill core functions to ensure safe sanitation to protect public health. Therefore, they should be part of the SSP team. To cover climate change impact, the team should include specialists in climatology, hydrology and disaster or emergency management. A team leader should be appointed to drive SSP. This person should have the authority as well as the organizational and interpersonal skills to manage the project. It is important to divide responsibilities among the team members at the start of the process, outline SSP activities and assign them to a specific members. The SSP effort will require an in-kind commitment of time and some direct costs during the preparation phase, for instance, for sampling and testing, data collection and field investigations. Funds will be also required to implement improvement measures. Great! So we have now completed Module 1 of the SSP methodology. Prepare for SSP. You have learned how establish the priority area, set the objectives, define the boundary, and appoint the lead organization and assemble the team. I recommend downloading the 2018 WHO guidelines and learn more about sanitation planning in Chapter 4. You also should download your SSP manual and revise the Module 1. In the following lecture, we will continue with the sanitation safety planning methodology in a specific module 2, describe the sanitation system. Thanks for watching and happy SSP!